even hear my voice, but I'm gonna try to speak slowly so that uh, <laughs> everything is clear. Um, my name is Davide Ferrando. I am an architecture critic. I work in the University of Bolzano and I'm very happy to be here today. I have to thank Michele Bonino for inviting me to introduce and moderate this uh, lecture by uh, Gong Dong, who's Okay, sorry, <laughs> usual technical problems. So I was saying Gong Dong from Vector Architects who is connected with us from China and Stefano Pugliatti from Elastico Farm who is here with us today. The structure of the uh, presentation will be as such. Um, they are going, I, I'm gonna give a very brief introduction of the, why the work of these two offices is relevant. Uh, after that, Gong Gong is going to present some of his works, then Stefano Pugliatti is going to present some of his works, and this should leave us more or less half an hour for questions. I know that some of you guys have been working already on questions, because it is some sort of course that you are following. Therefore, I would give priority uh, when it's the Q&A moment uh, to you. And then if there is still some time before you have to go back to your courses, um, I can add some extra questions or we can even have a dialogue if it's possible between the two architects. I have um, prepared a very small introduction, but I would really like to read it. Uh, I usually read only when I'm trying to express complex thoughts because I never remember how to do otherwise. And what I would like to say is that it has become a, a common habit in the last few years to speak of buildings in terms of their performance rather than their form. So that projects that do not bring into play at least one of the keywords of the moment, uh, participation, sustainability, resilience, reuse, recycle, low cost, you name them, you know them very well. So these projects are progressively being excluded from magazines, from exhibitions, from awards, and even from academies. Of course, this is uh, an exception. Uh, as a consequence, within today's architectural culture, we encounter more and more often narratives that are meant to legitimate projects by showing that they address the words of the day in one way or another. This shift in focus from form to performance is interesting. I think it is indeed interesting. And it is a clear sign of today's spirit of the time. Hmm? Nonetheless, this shift brings with it the weakening of form as a topic of architectural investigation. And this, of course, is a problem because this inevitably ends up impoverishing architectural culture itself. It is for this reason that many contemporary narratives on sustainability and, and so on actually function as excuses for projects that otherwise would have little or no interest. Vector architects and Elastico Farm need no excuses because the way in which their buildings perform is not independent from their formal order. On the, count, on the contrary, in their works, form and performance are deeply intertwined. Their forms perform. And it is precisely the synthetic and active character of their material arrangements, their embodied intelligence, so to say, what makes their architectures so interesting for us. Not only because the capacity to articulate thought through form is an essential part of architectural design, but also because this capacity is independent from the content of the thoughts that are articulated. In other words, architects are, or at least should feel free to choose whatever themes they want to address with their work. Because in the end, what really matters is how they address these themes. So what do Vector Architects and Elastico Farm address with their work? For today's very brief gathering, I have invited Gong Dong and Stefano Pugliatti to present two realized projects 
from their practices. A classic, so to say, and a more recent project. These projects have been selected because they have in common themes that are typical of both these architectural practices. Among them, it is worth to mention the relationship between building, landscape, and atmospheric agents. And in this case, you will especially see the relationship with sunlight and water. The attention to the material and uh, the attention to the material and atmospheric dimension of buildings, which in two of today's examples is also obtained by means of a definition of a subtle facade systems. Also, the seamless integration of structure and form, which provides the buildings that we will see today with a strong but very different tectonic quality. Indeed, the two works we will see by vector architects are firmly anchored to the ground, while the two works by Elastico Farm almost seem like they want to fly. And finally, the conception of architecture is a constantly changing assemblage of space and time, where time here is intended both at the micro scale of the narrative time during which architectural experience is made, but also at the macro scale of natural time during which architectures slowly transform both in their appearance and in the way they are inhabited. Having said that, uh, I would leave the word to Gong Dong and I thank you both Gong and Stefano for being here today and of course everyone here for listening to them. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you for introduction i think the the introduction itself could be a very profound topic we can discuss later on well um okay i'm going to share the screen let me share the screen can you see it yes great well, the time is uh, very limited today, uh, so I don't need to talk a very complex way during the presentation. We can leave more time for the later on discussion. Uh, very straightforward title, intervening and connecting. Somehow it's relevant to what you have talked just a moment earlier. I think in many cases, architecture definitely is not about a dead object or a dead form. It's a sort of action. So architecture for me, it's almost like a medium, of course, to intervene and connect things, connect the, all the resource together, connect a specific place on the earth together with time and people. So that's, I think, is the fundamental power of architecture. So I'm going to uh, talk about the two projects you just mentioned. Uh, the first one is a hotel project. It's the Yangshuo Sugar House project. And uh, it's a renovation project with a new addition uh, in terms of this architectural program. And it's located in the very southern part of China, which is uh, uh, claim as the mo well the most beautiful landscape in uh, in China. And if you see the the red line on the screen, that's the property line of the project, and it's very close to a very famous river, uh, Lijiang River. And then the surrounding geographical characteristic is the karstic mountains. So. That's, you know, that's a very iconic view of our site. In the middle, uh, beside all this beautiful mountain water landscape, we have an uh, existing factory, which is about 50 years of history. And later on, it's abundant. And then we have the chance to renovate it and then make it to a new uh, hotel compound. Uh, that's another angle you can see the, the beauty of the site. And in the middle of the, the, the image is that the existing factory. 
It's actually a sugar mill factory from the from 1960s. And uh, in the late of 1980, uh, unfortunately, this factory was uh, closed off because of the environmental protection policy from the government. But very luckily, this entire structure was not demolished, maybe because the location of the site is not in the center of the county. So nobody really care about demolishing it until one day our client uh, seeing the site and then have this idea to transform this into the later use. And I'm, I'm also very fortunate to have the chance to had a lunch together in the early process of the design project. And all these people eating with me, they're the original workers. They used to work in this factory when they're young, but now because the factory is shut off, so they do whatever they're doing now. But during the lunch, I feel a very strong emotional link between their memory and to this project. So sometimes architecture is really a kind of belonging of the local people and local culture. It's really not only about this physical existence. Uh, usually when we start a project, I will go to the site quite often, and then I will do this uh, hand sketches. I think it's a very effective way for me to establish this kind of uh, an intimate connection between architect and the site. And this is a series of sketches in the very early stage. And then we make physical models. This is a schematic model currently uh, displayed in MoMA, New York. And you see, this is a, the central part is the existing factory, which still plays a very important role in the compound. And then we have in, uh, also an uh, existing industrial truss connecting this whole site to the Lijiang River. Along the highway, it's actually the new addition of the guest rooms. So these are the two volumes adding to this factory, together making this as a entire hotel compound. And that's the, also early sketch. We try to make this new volume as simple as possible in terms of the profile, because we want this new and old to have a compatible relationship. But at the same time, we like to create a kind of circulation of movement inside this new volume. But the space is inside, and the people's movement, movement is inside. But outside, we try to cover this space by using a sort of semi-transparent or translucent facade to allow the air and uh, the light to come through, but to give some definition about the space between in and out. The local weather is very actually uh, mild. So this kind of translucent facade is not necessarily to be weatherproofed. This could be uh, semi indoor and outdoor. But of course, the guest rooms are all the indoor space. Well, this is a very uh, close shot of the existing brick building of the factory. So you can, you can uh, instantly feel the beauty of it. So how we make this new architecture coexist together with this old ones and establishing a kind of harmony that's the ultimate goal of our new architecture intervention. So in the early design stage, this is very important, uh, a kind of tec tectonic articulation. We try to use a kind of hollow concrete block. It's all masonry and it's actually stacked up. So inherently it has a consistency with the original brick, but because it's made by concrete, so it's uh, representing more about the contemporary quality of the current materiality and the functionality of the material. And that's the early stage of the tectonic detailing drawing. And then we went to this uh, physical model, schematic, one to 100. 
And then we built this a large mock-up model inside office. It's not made by the true material. It's made by form, but this one-to-one -one scale make, uh, make it easier for us to make our judgment in terms of the opacity and the scale of the facade. And then we went into this manufacturing process together with the client. I think the client made a very smart decision. Eventually, he actually set up this his own factory just inside the construction site. And then there's a few of uh, uh, tacticians. We work together to really invent the building technique. And this is the, the some images showing the the working state uh, along the process. And that's actually almost like a, a, a small factory. And then uh, in the far distance is the construction site. So they hire uh, a, a very capable team and they do it really by hand, cast this concrete hollow block half a year earlier than the project started. So it can catch up with the later pace of the construction. And that's some detailed images showing the process of how we casting this concrete block. It's kind of complicated, but I don't have too much time to explain detail, but casting and uh, invent all this, uh, the, the form work, and then eventually to leave this concrete block outside of the form work, it's, it, we, we did a lot of uh, alternative options, but eventually seems like we find out the, a, a very good solution. And this is the, the way they stack it up. It's really handmade. Uh, and there's some trick, design trick. For example, how we hide this kind of uh, rebar, steel rebar to resist this lateral force. And uh, by designing all the profiles of the concrete block. And by drilling the hole in the natural stone block, eventually you don't see any of this kind of structure element along the facade. So the facade is more about light and air. It's, it's a purified surface of the space. That's the eventual outcome of the construction. So it's kind of a stacked facade uh, with the concrete block in the middle and then a layer of natural stone, the local natural stone. It's a kind of very cheap general material in the local area. And I give you guys a bird's eye view of the entire site. So that's the, the factory and that's the new addition. And this is the truss, which actually uh, transformed into a swimming pool for the hotel. And that's the Lijiang River turning the corner. And that's the beautiful, uh, car, car stick uh, topo. And this is inside a compound. We use this uh, fire extinguished water to make a, a beautiful landscape with a uh, reflecting pond. And that's actually the shot flying above the Lijiang River and look back to the trust and to the compound in the distance. I will play a very short film to give you a more a uh, specific feeling about how these projects look like.
All right. The second one, uh, well, it's actually an earlier project. Uh, it's a it's a library, and the, the uniqueness of this project is is literally along the beach, a seashore, and then there is a residential compound behind it. So it's almost like a in between the ocean and the human settlement. Well, I will give you a feeling about how fast this Chinese urbanization is. And this is the two pictures taken. One is in the 2013, another one is 2021. So seven, eight years, this entire site is changing drastically. And our project, after the completion, it's over here. So you see all these constructions are actually done uh, within the seven years. So it's very fast speed and definitely caused tremendous pressure for architect and for this industry. You know, how we keep this quality design construction through this uh, fast speed and then the very huge quantity. And but the very first day I was there, it's lonely. There's no residential, any building along the beach yet. So it's really a very primitive situation, but it's already very different now. And then at that moment, I even feel a kind of insecurity because when you, you know, stand in this particular spot as a human figure in front of this vast scale landscape. And then this is quite inspiring for us. This is actually an existing shelter but it's already uh, demolished. But through all these windows, it's really a very poetic but powerful interconnection between this uh, perception and the ocean in the front. And this gave us a, some a inspiring uh, clue for the later design process. So the entire building was about section, a series of different sections and uh, on the right hand, it's the major space, the reading room of the library. So you can see the facade to the ocean is more transparent than the facade towards the residential compound. And the section shows uh, a really a serious thought about the air, the light, the ambience of the space. And eventually, it's about the experience and uh, physical and the psychological connection between human being and, and the nature. And that's the early stage. Hand drawing is very important for myself to uh, push this design forward step by step. This is some early drawings about this atmospheric study. And large scale models. This is a model displayed in Venice Biennale in 2018. Uh, that's about four years ago already. Uh, Plan, plan is very simple. Just a big reading room with a series of supportive programs alongside. Yeah. There's only one diagonal wall within this rectangle uh, setting is the one in the middle uh, across to the first floor to the second. And that's the moment right after the construction. This is the facade towards to the to the ocean, but on the on the back, if you go there right now, you can see a lot of residential buildings already. This, so it, this is really about a momentary situation for architecture. But on the back side, it's more solid. And right now, you, can, you cannot even take this angle as a, as a shot because it's already occupied by this residential compound. But the beach is still empty. Yeah. So the building, the adjacent surrounding of the building, it's still pretty well preserved. So that's a series of uh, shots showing the completed condition of the building. I won't spend too much time on explaining those. I just quickly go through all these images to give you a feeling about how the space looked like. So it's a series of apertures 
towards to the ocean. And of course, dealing with this human scale, the, the enclosure, the openings, the scale, the darkness and the light and how the air actually penetrate. But a very unique and interesting story for me as an architect is actually after this building was completed. This is the shot taken in the 2015 May time. It's the starting moment, uh, opening moment of this facility. And right after the opening, we have this online platform, architecture and lifestyle online platform, Yitiao, which is actually very popular. And they made a only five minutes video clip of this building and the post online. And then until two years ago, it's already 15, oh, sorry, 500 million of viewers of this very simple video clip. clip. So all of a sudden, this building is now is no longer a facility for this residential compound. Instead, it becomes uh, this social hype of a culture place. There are many people, they're traveling for long distance. They take even airplane to just come here specifically to visit the building. And that's the moment around that moment, uh, 2015, May and June, the building is like this. We, we actually collect all these pictures randomly in the internet. So you see how chaotic this building and crowded this building is. But soon after this, the client apply online reservation system. So it's okay now. It's becoming a, a more normal atmosphere of a reading place. And that's actually the angle towards the ocean. And uh, along this recent five years, we again collected some pictures online or from my friends to just let you know how this building was, uh, was used through this recent five to six years. It's very interesting and it's very unique, different from any other buildings we have been designing. Uh, this is, I guess, the, the tourist people, the local residents who use the space to write homework, I guess, and family, elderly people, children. Children are happy in the, in the building because they, they find their own corners. And, I'm sorry. And this sleeping ladies, I have been always asked about this question. Why Gong, you design a library, but nobody read. They sleep, they take photos in your space. And I don't have any answer for that. And that's the, the construction workers, sometimes they stop by because we still have other projects around. And that's the friends, lovers, young people, and students come here to take their graduation picture. And very strange post by, I guess, strange artists or, I don't know, models, I guess. And this is all the celebrities, uh, actresses, actors, uh, rock and roll singers that come here to do different kinds of things. And uh, a, a numerous times of uh, a class, symbolism, they actually use this building by their own imagination. They use every corner of it in different ways. And the floor, sometimes they empty the floor and to do this dancing club, uh, dancing class for the local residents. And this on the right side, it's, uh, I think it's three years ago, they invited some uh, singers from the minority in the southern part of China to do, do this kind of singing show along with the sunrise. And they use this building as a background for party, for even for the, uh, the fashion show. And they use the wall of this building for projecting the, the film. You know, this outdoor uh, cinema, it's bedding in our Chinese memory because in the 1970, 1980, we always do this kind of uh, things when during my childhood. Yeah. 
And this is even they do this concert inside the building. And coincidentally, because of the stepping of the floor, well, it's very good for the audience to look at the stage. And the curved roof is very good for the acoustic uh, quality. So this is all beyond our design intention, actually. And then they invite some very uh, important poet to read their uh, work inside the space. And they sometimes, that's, of course, before the pandemic, they invited uh, this kind of uh, a jazz player from the United States to come here to give this uh, very special show. And two years, actually this is last year, and they will do this again this year. They, you, they do this festival of the, the theoretical, theoretical festival in this compound. And this, uh, the main stage is using this building facade as the backdrop of the show, of the performance. So for me, this is really a very interesting experience as an architect, because this entire building is only about 400 or 500 square meters, but it really grew together with the community. Before it's kind of very private uh, residential compound. They even have a fence and have a gate, but now of course they still have the fence and gate. This is very normal in China, but many people go there, especially in the summertime to enjoy this uh, a lot of public activities of this community. So it's it's a very interesting story in China because this building is called the loneliest library of China. But the, the building is no longer lonely at all after all these activities happening. And this is the two major projects and I will go through, use just uh, extra one minute to go through our current design, which is under the construction, is a bathhouse to the north of Beijing, and it's located inside a forest, and it's along the hillside. I, I won't sp uh, spend too much time, just give you a sense about this ongoing design. Again, the sketches to uh, manipulate all this design arrangement and the major space, uh, atmosphere study. And this building is really about this verticality of the section because the height is sensitive because of the surrounding elements. Yeah. And that's some uh, renderings to show how this building will look like after, after the construction. So it's almost like a space shape to be falling uh, into this specific location. And that's the major lounge area for resting and some connecting circulation space. And that's actually on the very top, the bath, it's at the top floor with this very cylinder of the light and this uh, cross air on top of the roof. And this is uh, some shots when they, they're doing that right now, they're uh, doing the surface of the concrete uses bush hammering because somehow, I want to have this very subtle link between the texture of the building to the surrounding rocks. There are a lot of this uh, naked rocks alongside the hillside. Yeah. And that's the picture taken two weeks ago. The building is growing with the trees around. All right, David, that's my part. Thank you very much, Gong. Thank you very much. Thank you again. <laughs> I will immediately leave um, the microphone to Stefano, and then for the time that we will have left, we will have the short discussion. Hello everybody, thank you for being here and thank you Michele for inviting me, thank you um, Davide for the introduction. I don't know where I am, 
Thank you. Um, congratulations to Long Dong for um, Long Dong for the beautiful presentation, and uh, it's quite an honor to talk after that, even if it makes things even harder than usual. I'm not a great speaker. My English is what it is, and uh, I try to to do my best and to run fast because I look forward to go eating. And uh, so I start speaking about uh, my work, always showing this, no, the, the first slide about the cows. And that's uh, because every cow on, this, on that slide belongs to a herd. And uh, all our projects is only one project. We are working only on one project. All our office is working on the project it is composition of many small projects. So like a herd, every, every cow is genetically similar to the neighbor, our projects are all genetically similar one to another, even if they look very, very different and they have their own uh, personality and they have their, they are the, pro the product of their own, of a different and independent thought. Uh, I will speak about the, the two projects I'm presenting today, but first I need to speak about my obsessions, especially, and there are two obsessions. One, the first one, that will lead to the first project is water. Water, I've been assessed by water since long time and I was studying in Venice and this image is very important to me. Water makes the whole difference in how people is perceiving Venice when they walk on, a, when, they, when they go and there is no high tide and when they go when the tides are high because they perceive the cathedral uh, in a completely the, bas the basilica in a completely different, uh, in a completely different way. So the guy that actually is putting down that path is deciding how the people from all over the world will perceive Piazza San Marco in Venice. This is to me very important: the power of water, and uh, how this power of water is determined by the position of Earth, Moon, and Sun. This threesome, in which. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, the, 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 the weight of importance of the, of the position can create a big difference in the movement of water. Move, water is like the sentiment of the earth toward the sun and the moon. That's how I interpret it. And, the, and water changes the landscape. This was my, what is a slide from my first, my master thesis uh, in, um, in SIARC many, many years ago. And it shows how the how one island that is Kaurle, it became a peninsula and then now a day it's actually part of the mainland. So how water flowing brings sediments to the sea and changes the landscape. So the power of water is very interesting. I always say that pretty interesting is how uh, water is seen as the biggest enemy of architecture because actually we have to build roofs and we are, only, we, can, we are not free to do whatever we want when we deal with water. Water comes from the top, comes from the sides, comes from the bottom. And we only have a fight. And then we all make, as architects, peace with water when we go to the Biennale in Venice. This is where everybody want to go. And uh, it's interesting because the water is the main element in Venice that we notice. And, uh, and uh, so when we talk about water, we talk about physical elements like... Uh, uh, cap um, uh, communicating vessels or, or um, um, capillarity that shows, that brings, uh, that, that becomes a problem, uh, becomes a problem in construction and shows up as salt, brings up with itself salt and shows in that, that uh, image taken in Venice again, it shows uh, the water and the humidity coming from up. So we worked, uh, uh, and water at the other, th and the other hand, this is a, uh, a sculptural element project we did many years ago. It's uh, corrupted materials. So you have to relate with water if you wanna understand how, uh, the, how the material will react and you wanna control the reaction of materials toward that. And these are projects that we deal, dealt with water. We used water to insulate a building in this case or we used water in a different way, in a spectacular way, in emphasizing the power of snow in this other project. Or we used ice, again, is an isolating water. Water has a form of water, fluid, but it can become solid, it can become snow, 
a little bit solider, and then it can become ice. And this is the, the Maison Glacé project in Canada, which are, these are some tests on the facade. And uh, then water became uh, vapor and it became humidity and it can show, and we tried to use it in, in some facades prefabricated of a prefabricated uh, factory lab, lab here in Torino, in which you can see the writing coming out and disappearing with different change of humidity of the facade. So I'll talk about the hotel <coughs> in Piancavallo. Is, is Piancavallo is uh, located very, very close to, uh, to Pordenone and uh, very close to the flatland. So if you see this, uh, this is the flatland. This is Piancavallo. This is where I was born. And, uh, and you see there is the seaside. The Adriatic Sea is very close. So that makes the weather condition very, very specific, very, very different from from other areas in the mountains. Uh, let's say that if we had the building to be here, would be less problem than having there because the charge of, of snow can be very, very, uh, very big and very heavy because the humidity from gets to the mountains in winter and it snows and sometimes it snows really a lot and it snows very watery, very heavy. So uh, this is the, the this is our uh, location, not so beautiful as what we saw before because. Uh, it's a very, very new, a new town. It's a new town that was invented, Piancavallo, it was invented in the 70s, and it was just a ski resort, as, as a ski resort. And all the housing that have been built around don't really have anything to deal with the mountain. They could be in the seaside easily. Uh, we were, uh, these are the, the buildings that are the surrounding or where we are, uh, we had to make the intervention and uh, we, they, we were asked to uh, ampli uh, to to rem rem remodel this and make it bigger, but they were when they we got won the the bidding of for this project we were just they were very worried about this roof roofs because uh, and they they wanted to they pointed it out many times that the snow was a big problem all those roofs are really leaking nowadays they are a big problem the form of the of the roof is not that is not correct for that kind of climate, which I say again, it's no, when it snows, it snows a lot, then it melts, then it freezes, and it creates these layers of different ice that can be really, really problematic. So starting this work, I started thinking about some art reference. We always work towards references, but we don't like to make reference to architecture because we are ignorant in architecture, and so we try to go towards something that we like, and we love to, to look at what artists do. Artists, in our opinion, just look a little bit farther because they are freer. So uh, only Andy Goldworth means made this ball and said this uh, snow is not something that you can't manipulate. Snow, if you compress, it melts much slower than if you not, don't compress it. So if you throw it around it melts fast if you compact it it melts slowly this is very banal but it's very interesting thing to to think about so we started designing thinking about this project as a uh, as a roof all the how all the building had to be a roof so this is the really first first model which then went to the building site and it's not and it became something it was already different, but uh, we were working on the same concept, and then this is what is finished. It's like we were kind of surprised of when we started thinking about the roof, and actually that form came out. There's, in the middle, there was a mess on the building. There was a lot of work putting things together. But the process, which I want to talk about, I don't care about the building, I want to talk about the process, was like so consistent, so uh, so hard to keep it consistent and somehow so hard to make it change. So the detailing was very uh, punctual, but at the same to get to, to the certain result, but at the same time it was referring always to this and then due to the construction, it came this and then it became the building. So it's this continuous process that started from the beginning and ended up in the building. It's always, uh, it's the work we we took time to do, and because we believed that the idea we were 
following was that even in the choice of materials was always addressed toward that first kind of idea, which doesn't mean that the first idea is the good one always, but sometimes you have to go around and know that you will change it if it's needed, but through a lot of work and through the discussion. Again, these elements that were already in the first model and this, this, they became the, uh, the elements of the facade. They are still, they're already there. They, we didn't know how they would have looked, but the, the principle of building the roof and other roofs and never having the, the snow stay in a place, or if you wanted the snow, to the snow to stay in a place, it was for a certain purpose. So this is the section of the building, the detailing of the section of the building, the construction of the section, and how this, the building was at the end before the, the, the opening and how it's, it was when it was finished. Of course, there is a, a big uh, uh, reference to Carlo Molino and I've, I've been living in Torino for 25 years now. So of course I've been influenced by this place. And uh, so I knew everybody would have said that. And so I put it, the strong reference in the, in the picture of Carlo Molino in the, in the um, chandelier uh, plans to make the thing, to show you that the things work and that you need to do the technical work and uh, how to organize this, the space and how to decide you organize. It's not a conventional hotel that it works every hotel. Like every hotel, there is two lobbies, two different lobbies. You never know if the lobby is where you actually uh, go inside at the beginning or where you rest when you go into the bedroom. We, we didn't build any other hotel before and we didn't build it afterwards. It's just, we don't care so much about the function that goes into a building. We are interested in other things that the building can communicate. Function is never to us important. Uh, the, the program is never so important. The program can adapt to our the architecture, can adapt to our ideas. I'm saying something that is very risky, but uh, I prefer to adapt the program to what we are thinking or what we want to achieve then adapting what I want to achieve to the program. And it's always a compromise, of course, but uh, that's, uh, that's something, uh, it's our way of working in the office. And so this is a student from Polytechnic of many years ago that came to visit because we did a workshop. I had been teaching here too, some times ago. And the corridors and the spaces inside and all of this, the bedrooms, and uh, again, some jokes, because when we, when we were asked to build this building, they said, we need to bring the spirit, the spirit of, the play, of the mountain to the place. And uh, so we decided to create ghosts into the bedroom. So all these people that were into this change, printed in the chains, are dead people who were great skier, great hang, uh, cli uh, hang cliffhangers or, people like that, but who died probably in the mountains. So, so we actually printed them. So they became the ghosts that goes around this place. And when you go into the bedroom, you move those and they start skiing again. And then they go into quiet, uh, in their quiet life. And uh, this is something, it's always stupid to do, do these things, but it's important for us to, to play a little bit. And, uh, and this is the, um, the furniture that is again, it's a very economic building. It's something that we, we built up uh, with, uh, with a limited budget in which we were asked to do everything. So we, we took the same material we used to build the walls and we cut into chairs and tables and whatever. But again, I show you this image because I wanted to tell you what I'm really interested. What I'm really interested in was this, the relation between the snow and the building, which becomes similar to the relation between the building and and uh, between the, the, the snow and the mountain. It looked like we wanted to imitate the mountain. In fact, we actually didn't want to do that, but it came out that the form that follows water is actually what we were interested in. A form follows water in this, in this building, not function. It then functions too, but it's okay. And I think man is, uh, if he likes the place he goes, he's very adaptable. And we we live we make discotheques into churches uh, in churches and uh, we make everything we want into places we like. If we like a place, we make we use it. And this is the real project I was interested in, how showing the motion of snow into the the building. 
or the ice growing into the building. The, the icicle in the middle of this uh, uh, conversion of the roof that becomes bigger and bigger and it gets to touch the ground. And when it's summer, all that becomes like a waterfall where water is collect, connected, collected in the middle where the stones are and uh, it goes then, it, it's used to, to create uh, snow for the ski trucks. And this was a sketch that was done previously and was like telling where we wanted to go. And actually we were able to get there and uh, through a process of learning. Every time we, every time we were working on the project, we th thought of going out of, of what we were our main goal, but actually at the end, it turned out that we got where we wanted. Again, uh, as I said before, uh, one of the session is, uh, is water, the other session is how structure works and how structure can be manipulated. Again, making it become part of the building, not just for what, uh, what it is, so holding the things, but how we can communicate something through the building. And the, in this art is very interesting. If you see this work that is in Castello de Rivoli, I'm not, I don't know if it's exposed now, but it was part, it's part of the permanent collection. It's called the Respiro by Anselmo. Is, uh, and uh, it only says, it, it shows that small sponge in the middle uh, shrinks and, and uh, expands with a shrinking and the spending of, the, of, the, of those two metal bars. This is very important. It shows every building we do breathes actually with, war, with hot and, co uh, and cold. With heat and cold, it, it expands, it moves. Its part, structure is part of the uh, the, the structure is a living part of the building. Or again, Anselmo showing us what's torsion. And it's not different from the other way, uh, the, it was the discobolo that was expressing torsion. Art always somehow expresses some energies and this energy is very important. And art somehow shows, showed it 40 years ago, maybe those strength of that energy that was there 4,000 years ago. Or this is another element that is, to me is very dear, work that's to me very dear, it's, that speaks, it says actually is the sky shorter. That sky, the sky on top of that bar is one meter shorter than the rest of the sky. And when we build something in this world, we know that we can shorten the, the sky or we can understand the land, or we can expand the sky if we make a hole in the land. So we are acting on this land, on this, of the earth. We expand the earth or we can compress the earth. And this, again, art talks about that. Or this is very sensual from Bernini and the Rapt of uh, Ratto della, um, uh, non della Sabina, ma Ratto di, uh, okay, I don't remember the name, but it's not, and Penone. That th this, again, man that touches nature in a sensual way and makes it, uh, um, and, and, and makes it become li alive and shows life through that. And structure and, uh, what, and, uh, and the resistance of the materials to water. Something again, how structure react, reacts to the elements of life. These are examples of how we work with structure. This building is all built with uh, panels of granite in this case, granite and some of, uh, of prefabricated concrete. And they are overlaying in, uh, in an attempt to create a cow, and the name of this building is House of Cards and it's built like a House of Cards. Or another way, a screen and a structure that is uh, the, the, the element that become the play between structure and decoration on a house that used to be built on stones and now stone that was structural and now structure becomes concrete and stone becomes pure decoration. And, uh, and it becomes a screen through which you can see. So I'm talking now about the other project. It is a project in the seaside. In, uh, it's a project for vocation home for rich people. So it's very banal uh, theme. But as I said before, I don't really care much about the program. What I'm, I care is how this 
uh, building relates to what happens around and wants to tell a story. This is the Batiment Descendent Escalier. Of course, you can understand the reference to L'Homme Descendent Escalier uh, of uh, Duchamp, but uh, the, the idea is that, again, this building is detached from the ground and it, it somehow uses this stair that is a public path to cross and to go toward the, to, to become part of a public space. The land, the place, uh, the place is not far from the beach, but is at the same time far too far for a beach from the beach for the rich people. So how could we bring some rich people to buy so far from from the beach, but close to the main commercial area? In uh, in in a place in which uh, uh, actually there are some some higher rise here that actually uh, look to the beach. But you know, if you live in these high rises here and you are here, you don't really see the beach. The only people who see the beach is this, the, the front people. The other people just see uh, piece and pieces of that. So let's say we cannot, our building can never see, be this, but can surely be better than the back parts. So we, we started thinking that people that go to the beach, actually they wanna get sun and see, see view. And uh, actually they want to get the sun as the grapes want to get the sun to get ripe. So it's like a vineyard. We designed it as we, we would design a vineyard. So we, 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 we took, this is east, this is west, this is north. Uh, the, view, the view to the seaside is here. But the view on the north is very beautiful. It looks at the mountains and it looks at, uh, at the lagoon that is very, the Venice Lagoon that is a very, very nice area. And so this, this element becomes like a terraces building and, uh, and it, it shows itself like being a terrace building. It wants to, to show that everybody can look at the sea. And when you are here, actually you get sun all day and you get from morning to evening, and you get view from, let's say, very good view from third floor up. Something that, that you couldn't be if you were closer to the beach, but you didn't have that exposure. The big problem when they gave us this project is that this part here was already sold, the bottom part. So I tell you the story about the structure, why these nighty looking sticks are there because that's the comment a lot of people say. This is 90 look, 90 looking uh, Cyark uh, on testosterone building. It's uh, it's actually it's actually about that. This was the the it's about structure. This was already sold. All this block here was already had already been sold like it is, and uh, with this structure, if you build in a rational, what, what you mean rational way, you could build either a building like this, but was too short to hold all the, all the apartments because we couldn't go higher high enough, or we could, you could build like this, which is much longer, we could even go further, but the people on the back would not see the seaside as well. So we decided to, to do this, but we had the problem of this big problem, that these are the, the pillar, these were the lines of pillar we had to use. We could not use the other pillar, but our building was this on top. These are small apartments divided by sheer walls that, that hold the, the structure of the building. So how do you put these two structures together? That's, that's not gonna work. If you don't have a smart engineer who says, Stefano would love that not to be straight. To take the shear walls, take the loads carried by the shear walls and bring them to the, to the pillar. So we made big, we kept the main lines and we made bigger pillars. We just expanded the pillar and that was accepted. So, but to do that, we had to elevate, to elevate the building of one floor and which was allowed it because we made it longer so we could take away one floor from the bottom. And we created this big, again, public space 
that is very useful for the you for the for the place is so you have a building in the real center of the commercial area on on Yesolo, in real center with a supermarket behind uh, below so it's very comfortable you take an elevator you go to take your food and you have a middle space in which there is a swimming pool and if it rains your kids can stay down and uh, stay underneath here they can play whatever and and that's that was a very useful place so that our our investor accepted the proposal even if it, the cost were going up and this is what we actually proposed as a first uh, maquette and this is under construction in which you see the pillars coming the 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 plintus of the pillars coming from below and you here you can see that this come down here this come down here and this come down here and they they bring the loads down to the to the pillars of the structure this was under construction and it's very evident how the this uh, thing goes and the shear walls are evident here see all these shear walls the hold that are hold by these pillars that bring the loads down to the place this this image is pretty clear goes down goes down goes down and on this element this the fact of having these crooked uh, pillars stilts it makes uh, seismically strong the structure because is is a three dimensional uh, a tri dimensional uh, resistance to the to the earthquake uh, forces this is what it's now in which you saw how that floor had become something else had become a, a place for green to grow to the, the swim pool these are these are pictures that i don't like because they are made too early we should take pictures of this of this building in 10 years i think when the green when uh, the the dirt will make it more more real this is the place under underneath in and another thought was done on the on the uh, cladding of the building you see from this picture there is this cladding it was an experiment it didn't work too well i have to say but it's something i i want to still explore we work with uh, white tires and different and different colors of mortar why did we use tiles because we are in the seaside this very salty area we are talking about the resistance of the building we want this building to keep its somehow look of uh, of uh, clean look because it's a how it's a building for richer people so we ha you have to protect the building from the atmosphere from the from the water and from the salt and from the sand so ceramic was glass and ceramic was the right cladding but we wanted to try to use this this cladding to make it a little bit lively change with lights so we we changed colors of the mortar between tiles to see if that would lead to to something i don't know sometimes uh, it's pretty evident sometimes it's not it changes with the, the with the light here you see in this picture that the, the, there are colors and goes but that's not important so you see this this how the building is used but the, the other thing that is when you talk about a building its structure is cladding but the, any, every building we do we can synthesize in few elements but for example this building is the construct is the is built up of many many things is reaction to the to the place is the structure is the cladding and this is distribution how do you how do you distribute a building that has that form do you make many stairways or would you think to something else we were talking we were thinking about using that north facade that is very beautiful view to create the uh, terraces to distri uh, for distribution ballatoi and uh, and while those corridors, open corridors, look to the mountains, they can become something else. They don't need to be one meter 20 wide. They can become at some points, three meters, four meters, in which you can put your stuff. You can, you can 
uh, feel things and you can be trapped into this different world. And I use the word trapped because I, we were inspired as an image by the, the nets of the, the fishermen. And the fishermen net were colorful. And we wanted the building to be colorful. And was a color that uh, when you go to the seaside is kind of natural, but in Yezolo where everything is white and gray is not so natural. So, uh, excuse me. So the, you see, it's not so natural. It should be natural because it's, you are in the seaside, but uh, everything is white, gray and red roofs. So we, we, we took the inspiration of those nets and we actually created the feeling that you were, the, 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 the building was closed into a net. And those that are the, uh, these, the floating elements of the net actually became elements in which people can, people can use. The apartments are very slow, very small. People have uh, things that bring to the beach, like uh, flip-flops or whatever you don't want to bring into the house or the, how you say, gonfiabili, uh, inflatables or stuff like that. You put everything in the, those cabins and cabins that you don't bring it into the, into the building. So this is how you feel trapped into the, the net and how you perceive the space, space and you can relate to other floors. You are never alone somehow. And you watch, I don't have a picture of the, of the mountains from the outside. And th this is in the night. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.